everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to take you on a tour of this piece of equipment. It has spent a lot of time in my basement and now is up in the studio. So we're going to take a look at how it works, what it does, and how it helps me measure some of the very, very long works that I create. So stay tuned and we'll check out each part and I'll show you how it makes my life a lot easier. Now I've already started to set up my warp, or the yarn I'm going to use on the warp. What I have on the cone holder right now are four cones, very large cones. They're two and three pound cones of eight to 10 cell. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do 20 inch per inch, and I'm gonna make something 24 inches wide. And my warp is probably about 20, maybe 25 yards long. And I start by putting the cones in the holder, and you can see they go through some eyes there. Let me zoom in there. And then up at the top, there are some that go through. This cone holder, I could do up to 12 cones at a time. I've done up to eight, but that's about it. And now I'm gonna show you where the yarn goes. It goes from there, you get a little tour of the background of my studio. And it goes all the way up. Keep going, keep going. And at the very top, oh, don't know if we can get there or not. Let's see if we can. There we go. Let's just go back a little bit. There we go. So there we are. I'm using four of the six, and they're clamped up there. And then we're going to start to go down again. So as we go down, we can see that it goes to this box here. And I'm going to pause the camera and then we're gonna take a look at the whole situation so you can see a different view. All right, we're gonna start from this angle and you can see the thread is up there in those large eyes and then it comes down to the warping mill. I'm gonna pause there and you can see the threads go right through there. Let's see if I can get a little closer look at it. There are holes there, they go through each one. And we'll take a look at the other side. And there's the other side. So what's actually happening is each one of these threads is going through a hole. There are dowels are going up and down, up and down. And these are, this is like two little shafts that go up and down. And so what we have is one on the one shaft, one on this one, back and forth. So I have two and two. So what happens is it literally makes a cross. So there's the one way, go the other direction, and we have a cross, and that's what this does. So you can see that it works really, it's a really cool way to work. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna to try to set this up so you can see how I'm winding on a warp. I know I have a lot of distracting distractions in the background, but we'll do the best we can so you can actually see how this operates and how much fun it is. I'm going back the other direction. I'll show a close up in a minute. But right now, I'd just like you to see how this turns and you can see how the box where the cross is made and the tensioning box is what it's called, moves back and forth on that rod. Now, this is not the end where the cross is, so I'm gonna go back and I'm counting. We did one, two, this is three. And I do have to walk back and forth, but all I have to do is turn this. Now I'll show a close-up of what this, what I'm doing here in a moment. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the cross. 
So I have one thread up, I'm going to take the other one down, and what I just did was make the cross that goes through here. I wrap it around the back, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the cross the other direction. So now I have another cross, and handy as dandy, I actually have the next one, and then I will continue to wind it back the other direction. And so far, because I like to keep track of what I'm doing, we've done four times four, so I'm going to do one more, and I'm going to show you a close-up of what I'm doing. All right. I hope you can see what I'm going to show you here. We'll see in a moment. I might have to redo it. What I'm going, what I have is I have the first little shaft up, and I kind of put my fingers in between that, and then I'm going to lift the other one and literally make my cross, and the cross goes right there. I wrap it around the other way, slide my finger in, flop it down, put the cross there, and then what I do is I put this on the other side, and what I will do is I will continue to wind the other direction. The other thing I will also do is, this is a group of uh, 20 ends, so I put a little piece of um, yarn in here, so I know that it's 20, and I will do this for every inch, just like I do on a warping board. So I'll do that momentarily, but as you see, I'll just wind it back the other direction now.